Okay, hello and welcome to the weather update. 7 o'clock on December 12th, 2021. 12-12-2021. And we had a, finally, a day with some sunshine and I finally got to see some of these. (laughs) That's right. I don't have a video though, uh, but I did uh, go for a little walk in the pines today. Uh, and more toward the afternoon after things kind of dried out after that rain last night. But uh, there you go. Got nice blue sky there. Beautiful. Um, uh, looking at the Moda satellite, you could see uh, in the morning there were some clouds over the east end. Um, this was the frontier moving away, but it kept moving away. And uh, you could see uh, most areas had a mostly sunny day. Uh, Long Island, New Jersey, uh, mostly sunny and pretty much all day long. Uh, maybe a few very widely scattered pop-up clouds in Jersey, but other than that, uh, really a nice clear day, and we have a nice clear air mass. Look at this. This is all ours for the next uh, quite a few days here, so uh, we're going to have some really nice weather uh, as a result of that. But I want to get to the storm damage. We're going to see if we can find some storm reports, first of all, on our uh, weather service. And... Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, I don't really I don't have a link to it. I don't know if there are any storm reports that were issued for the storms yesterday, if they caused any damage in our area or not. Uh, let's see if there is any storm reports here. Let's see. Uh, yes. There's a tree down on a house in East Massapequa. Uh, this was from the... That was from the other storm. So, uh, yes, yeah, so that's just very wide, wide, not really a whole lot of damage in our area. We were very lucky uh, because upstate got hit very hard. And, of course, we all know about the tornadoes, which we're going to talk about. Uh, but I want to go to see if we have any storm reports on this site here. Um, of course, they probably don't have a link to any. Yes, they do. Okay, here we, here's a list of storm reports. Okay, so here we go. They posted a picture of it on Twitter, oddly enough. But... Uh, here you go. You should be able to see that. Hopefully, most of them. Uh, tree down. Wind damage in Herkimer, Montgomery. Go Harry. Wind damage. Two da- trees down on a house. So it's mostly straight line wind damage in New York. Uh, not, uh, uh, not, not. Fortunately, no tornadoes here. But we had a lot of straight line wind damage here, as you can see here. Uh, so uh, yeah, that's and this is this is from Albany. So uh, uh, this is just part of upstate here. Uh, the western area of New York really got hit hard, like Binghamton, especially Buffalo. Uh, so let's take a look and see uh, uh, Buffalo here, uh, storm reports here from Buffalo. Let's take a look at these here. Uh, so uh, a lot of them, a lot of them, 64 mile an hour wind gusts to Chattaqua, 64 mile, another 64 mile an hour, 63 mile an hour wind gust. Uh, this is Erie County in Kenmore. 60 mile an hour wind gust in Buffalo, tree down, tree down on wires off North French Road, non thunderstorm wind gust in Pendleton, which is by Niagara. Um, there's a lot of these storm ports. 63 mile an hour wind gust at Chattaqua, wires down on Town Line Road, live wires down on Town Line uh, on Newstown and Less Wing Road in, in Akron. Which, not familiar with these towns. Dunkirk, I've heard of. 63 mile an hour wind gusts there. Trees down on Curtison Road and North in, North Road intersection. Trees down. Trees down. Uh, lot. There's a lot of storm ports. I can't even read through all of these. Uh, I'll put a link there. But uh, large trees down everywhere. 68 mile an hour wind gusts in Hamburg. Uh, this is incredible here really is incredible it's just unbelievable uh what's happened upstate it really is Uh, and uh, we can't even uh there's lots of trees down on wires trees down on the roadway five trees down on the roadway so this area really got look at this near barry which is in orleans county new york 69 mile an hour wind gust Measured at the Orleans County Emergency Management Office. Not thunderstorm damage uh, in Erie. So this wasn't with the thunderstorm. These were just gusts ahead of the front. 62 mile an hour wind gusts. 
tree down on Transit Road in Deepu. Multiple trees down in Alma, which is in Allegheny County, New York. Allegheny County, New York. 70 mile an hour wind gust near Batavia in Genesee County. So, yeah, upstate really hit very hard. Um, in Webster, several road closures because of damn trees and electrical wires. It's insane. This is insane. Numerous reports of trees and power lines down in Natural Bridge, which is in Jefferson County, New York. So uh, a lot, uh, a lot of damage reports upstate. They got hit very hard up there, uh, and uh, this was really incredible here. Uh, uh, what happened upstate? Uh, this is a public information statement. I guess these are. Their weather radio has been knocked off the air as well, it appears. So let's go look at the power outage map for New York and see. We still, we're still in the orange here still. 50,000 outages still in, in these areas, in mainly western New York and extreme northern New York. Uh, so these, these are the kind of wind damage reports you had across New York. It's absolutely nuts. Um, absolutely nuts. Uh, and... Uh, if we look at Kathy Hochul's Twitter, um, she actually, to her credit, she finally brought up the storm, or at least on Facebook she did. Let's see if she brought it up on Twitter. Uh, yes, she's finally talking about the, the devastation here. So I'm glad she finally did that, but she, she should, should be sending her uh, prayers for the people dealing with these tornadoes. She hasn't brought it up at all. At least Phil Murphy has. So at least she did do something about this. Um, you know, because it's really a major emergency in New York State, and she's from that area. She's from Buffalo. Uh, so, uh, speaking of the devastation of these tornadoes, let's go and look at. Hold on a second. I had an article. Where did it go? Oh, here it is. Never mind. Uh, this is the article here. Um, uh, before and after uh, satellite images reveal the extent of the tornado's destruction. So multiple states in the South and Midwest are dealing with this. this is a historic t tornado outbreak. Worst tornado outbreak uh, in, in history in Kentucky. Uh, and probably the worst in the whole country as far as the month of December would go. Uh, so there's massive damage. Uh, the uh, this the hardest hit areas are uh, Kentucky, Tennessee, Arkansas, Illinois, Mississippi, and Missouri, with communities in western Kentucky hit expe exponentially hard. Uh, more than 80 people have been reported dead in Kentucky alone, and that number is likely to surpass 100, said Governor Andy Bashir. Search and rescue operations are continuing throughout the area, and a state of emergency has been declared. What follows below are sideline images showing the scale of the devastation in the three states that were hit. So here's Mayfield. Look at this. This is downtown Mayfield on the left after the tornado. Looked like a bomb went off. This is that that consumer, the candle factor. There were a lot of fatalities here. Uh, this is another picture here. Homes and buildings. And look at that. It's completely destroyed. Manette, Arkansas. This is nursing home, completely destroyed. This is the Amazon warehouse. But Jeff Bezos took a long time uh, to uh, talk about this tragedy. He was sailing on his, you know, let me start on Jeff Bezos. He is definitely the epitome of greed. Um, we're not here to rant about people, though. We're here to cover the weather. So uh, really discourage, dis just disturbing stuff going on. Uh, and this is the other, we have some more images here. Uh, I've been tracking Bowling Green, which is another area that has been ha very hard hit. Uh, their power grid was uh, really severely messed up. Uh, they, they had 24,000 of 30,000 customers without power. Um, uh, so they're down to 5,800, 5, but there is a lot of damage to the power grid. Uh, and I want to show you this now. Basically, the electric company, they have these small electric companies in the area, so a lot of them are like based on the municipal level, like uh, for a town. Um, uh, some of them are served by Western Kentucky Rural Electric, but um, 
the transmission system is usually part of the Tennessee Valley Authority. Uh, and look at the damage to this transmission system here. So you have metal poles. metal These metal lattice poles are not strong enough to deal with these winds. And look at a lot of them came down. 29 TVA transmission lines were down. 17 customer connection points were without service, mainly in Kentucky. Approximately 100 TVA power structures, towers, and poles were damaged and destroyed. So this is the challenge that we are facing now due to these ever-worsening storms, and we have to beef up our infrastructure even stronger. These, these metal lattice poles are not even strong enough to deal with these kind of winds. You need, uh, you need the, the fiberglass, the tubular fiberglass reinforced. Um, you know, they actually have concrete transmission lines in Florida. Uh, that may be what we may have to start doing all across the country. So here's some more pictures of some of these structures that came down. Uh, this is tremendous destruction to the transmission system here. And when these go down, it blacks out lots and lots of people, all right? Um, and uh, so this is uh, just incredible here. Uh, incredible damage, incredible devastation. Uh, and a lot of governors across the country are, are trying to send help, but I have heard nothing from New York, which is unbelievable. If New York doesn't send help when it's our turn, we're not going to get help our way. So I don't know. Holko is just sorry, <laughs> just sorry. So uh, well, anyway, a really major disaster there. Absolutely horrible. Um, and again, we send our prayers, our condolences, and you know, people need to try to send as much if they can send help, send help because this area has been devastating. We really have to start preparing for our infrastructure. Our infrastructure is woefully inadequate. Uh, forget about the pandemic this climate catastrophe has the potential to destroy society as we know it if we don't adapt and we are not adapting fast enough we're hardly adapting at all uh so let's get to the we our local weather right now uh taking all the way out a nice sunny uh, day with plenty of sunshine uh i think it was still a little bit above average I think highs this time of the year is supposed to be in the mid-40s. I think we made it to the upper 40s. Right now, uh, it's 38 at uh, uh, 39 at Islip. I see West Hampton is down to 27 already. So we're getting the radiational cooling out of the Pine Barrens, of course. Uh, clear skies, light winds, uh, low humidity. Dew points have dropped. Generally, dew points are in the mid-20s, so it's a lot better than yesterday. Um, New York City is 45 in Cent <coughs> Central Park. Let's see what we have in New Jersey. Any radiational cooling there? Not... <coughs> A little bit, 30 in in um, Miller Air Park, 34 in Lakehurst. Uh, so let's take a look at our highs, to, highs today. And I have a feeling one of these highs may have been set at midnight. Oh, yeah, they were set at midnight. It's not, yeah. <laughs> Those are not the daytime highs for today. Um, what we can do is we can change. Can I change the start time? I guess I can't. All right, we're just going to have to look at some of the stations and... Uh, Go that way, I guess. I'm sure there is a way to do it, but uh, we'll just have to do it. Because those highs were all set at midnight. Uh, like I said, it was incredibly warm last night. We, a lot of areas just broke records. It was absolutely crazy. Uh, so let's show you Islip. Uh, we can show you the front coming through, actually, Islip. So we'll show you Islipping. That, that's the official station of Long Island. You can see how warm it was last night. It made it up to 60 at Islip. You know, they, got, they, they hit their high. Uh, right, 9, 10 o'clock at night, which is crazy. Front moved through, and then temperatures started dropping. Uh, but we only got as low as the low 40s, uh, and that uh, set us up to getting up to 48 today at Islip, which I believe is above normal. Uh, I'll have to check the, for the normal high. We can check the climate data, but uh, that's definitely above normal uh, for sure. So 48, which is, uh, yeah, a little bit above normal for uh, this time of year. Let's look at Central Park and see what their daytime high was. We have to do it like this. That's not Central Park. That is not Central Park. This is Central Park. Uh, Central Park also got up to 48 degrees as well. And Central Park was up to 66. 66 yesterday. So yeah, they smashed that record of 64. Uh, and uh, let's see. How warm it got in uh, in in the New Jersey, a little further south in New Jersey in the Ocean County. 
I know. Why do you cover Ocean County so much? Well, because I may have to live there in the future. Whether I don't want to, but uh, let's see. Oh, there's hardly any observations at this airport. Let's go to Lakehurst. I don't want to, but like I said, may not be up to me. Got up to 48 there, so got up to 48 there. But last night it had risen to 67 degrees at 8 o'clock. That is incredible. Oh, and if I do have to live there, I guess I won't be uploading any more videos to this channel. You'll have to, uh, you know, watch my other channel, which I have from the Pine Power and J, which I haven't loaded anything on in like ages. Uh, gosh, I, I don't want to have to live in New Jersey, but this that's another to that's a topic for another video. Um, don't want to, but I may have to. Just, you know, eh, the plan doesn't care what I think. Uh, so let's uh, take a look at what we're going to have here for the next week. And we get this high pressure here. That's going to be with us. Bring us nice weather tomorrow. It's going to be above normal, though. Oh, yeah, I was going to look at the climatology, right? Okay, let me do that. Uh, get the climate report for today. I'm pretty sure we're above normal. Let me go to Islip. All right, so normal high is 45. So the normal daytime high would be 45. So, yeah, we were about three degrees above normal. It's about right. And the normal low is 42. Uh, the normal, uh, there was radiational cooling. No, the observed value is 42. The normal value is 31. So, yeah, the low is quite above normal. So, yeah, we we're solidly above normal again today, and that trend is going to continue. Uh, to Monday, too, especially as we get into a Monday, we see we get a little more of a westerly wind there versus a northwesterly wind. So have it be a little warmer tomorrow. We have a little shift in the wind for Tuesday that might bring a little cooler air. Then this high moves offshore. And our next chance of rain will be with the next cold. A very weak front looks like Friday. Uh, but it looks like our next really decent chance of rain would probably be on the weekend, perhaps Saturday, with this low moving through along a stalled frontal boundary. Uh, and then we're going to be playing with that stalled frontal boundary all weekend into the next week of December uh, before high pressure starts building in uh, a couple of days before Christmas. Uh, one thing you'll note here, it looks like it looks like some colder air is trying to come down, but if we look at our temperature anomaly forecast, again, this is the 18Z GFS we are looking at. Here's our temperature anomaly forecast. You can see above normal. Look at that. The whole country is above normal. Uh, above normal, very much above normal. We're probably going to have another really warm day uh, Thursday and possibly Friday, uh, and then another surge of warm air possibly tries to get in here for the weekend. And then it gets pushed down a little bit, but you can see... There is no real cool down. Um, there's no big cool downs, no Arctic air at all for this month. It looked like, oh, we were going to get some, and then it took it back. Uh, because, again, this pattern is just locked into place. Uh, and when I talk about the pattern, we go and we look at the jet stream, and we'll show you again what the problem is. Uh, so we have this uh, zonal jet stream here. Uh, zonal uh, with some troughs uh, in the west, but generally largely a zonal flow with occasionally some of these huge ridges in the east uh and this zonal flow just continues i mean it's just it's just unrelenting uh, uh i hope we have winter this year but who knows like i said sometimes it seems like we're just we're the face facts we're never going to have a normal winter again normal is over we're in the new normal now uh so let's take a closer look at our temperatures this week uh we'll be looking at the gfs so here's the Monday, uh, and uh, 50 degrees. We'll probably be up in around 50 degrees tomorrow. Uh, and then for Tuesday, we're going to be a little cooler because there'll be a little shift in the wind. I'll show you with the dew point and wind graphics. So maybe upper 40s in New Jersey might still be in the low 50s. Um, get into, getting into Wednesday, you can see the warm air trying to surge into the area. Here we are Thursday, uh, and you can see definitely trying to get up into the 50s. Um, it looks like, though, Long Island won't get into that really warm air. Um, it stays just to our south. Um, we'll have to see if that holds up. Friday, we're down a little bit. It's still around 50, so it's still above normal here. Here we are Saturday. Here's that real surge of warm air for Saturday. And it looks like if you're in New Jersey, you may deal with 70s, especially toward, like, Atlantic City and south. Tom's River looks like they'd be on the border. But Long Island will be uh, dealing with uh, the, the cold air, uh, though with the stall front, we'll have clouds and rain. Uh, then some cooler air tries to move in for Sunday. We get down to the mid-30s. 
Uh, but you can see in this whole pattern here, there's no really cold air. We have a couple of days maybe where uh, next the next week, not this next week, but the following week, the week, the days before the week of Christmas that we'd have highs in the 30s. But don't get your hopes up because that's in the long range. And between now and then, so many things change. And that's why I don't really like looking at the long range because it's so it's so inaccurate. You really cannot. There's so many variables that will change between now and then. Um, especially given cl the changing climate that the models can adapt to. So let's look at the dew point and wind flow here. Uh, you'll see here wind flows come a little more from the west tomorrow. Um, so it's that, that's going to bring a little more of a warmer flow. But as we get toward Tuesday, you can see the wind shifts more toward the north. That's going to bring in some cooler, a uh, slightly cooler air, I think, into our area for Tuesday. Uh, but then as we get into Wednesday, you'll see the winds go more southerly. That's going to bring in the warm air. And then southwesterly on Thursday. Um, and then for Friday, you'll see here, you're in that strong southwesterly flow. You can see here this front kind of just comes through, but then gets hung up just to the south and then tries to move back at us. And that might give us a rainy Saturday again uh, with the humidity just off to the south. And if we look at the precipitation here, you'll see. Uh, that uh, we're going to be dealing with possibly some rain on Saturday um, again. <laughs> so it seems like now we're in a pattern of Saturday having rain. Uh, we'll have to see if it's an all-day rain or it's just going to be a showery thing. Uh, but anyway, let's go look at some models with the sky here first. So let's go to the R gem. We'll show you the sky models here before I wrap up this weather update. Um, so here are the sky models. So here the sky model so tomorrow we may have some high clouds in the morning uh but then they have a tendency to clear out i think by the afternoon so so say west of the area so if you're in new jersey uh you should be mostly sunny by like 11 a.m uh long island maybe a little later than that but uh i think we'll still have a decent a decent at least second half of the morning we'll have the clouds that i think you'll be night, mostly sunny in the afternoon for sure uh and then mostly clear skies and then for tuesday it just shows some very widely scattered cirrus, very thin. Um, and then Wednesday, we're going to be dealing with more more in the way of clouds. Uh, but other than that, uh, it looks fairly clear. Uh, I can use the NAM too as well, looking at the skies as well. Show you again, it moves those clouds out pretty quick. This is actually a little faster. So by 11 a.m., you're mostly sunny, even in Long Island. So should it be a nice day tomorrow? Uh, and Tuesday, we'll have to watch this cirrus. And see how much of it actually gets in here. Um, it may it may not be all that much, though. So again, we have to look at the upper level moisture uh, for that. And uh, I guess for that, we can look at the Earth site. I mean, not the Earth site, but windy.com, and see how much upper level moisture there will be. Because I believe these are all high clouds that are being shown up on the model. And to confirm that, we will go and use uh, this model here, which is again the uh, European model here. Uh, so it's the European sky model. You can see again those clouds, but by noon they're mostly gone. So they're mostly gone and out of here. Uh, Tuesday we'll have to watch for those, some, some of those high clouds. You can see the north wind as well on here. So that'll bring cooler temperatures for you Tuesday. So let's look at uh, the um, humidity aloft. This is how we tell uh, how many high clouds we have. So we go to 250 here. All right, so this is the humidity aloft, and you'll see a little bit of more. Well, let's get, if you go to the morning, you'll see that there's a little moisture around. All right. See, there's really not a whole lot of, uh, but then it dries. I'm wondering if those are more mid-level clouds that are showing up. Uh, let's see. More. Let's see, it may be more mid-level than anything. I don't know. Let me see. We go to the clouds here. Well, cloud base. Yeah, this kind of shows us what the cloud base is. Kind of show here. Yeah, there are high clouds in the morning. There will be high clouds in the morning. Um, but I think I think for the most part, I think you're going to be mostly sunny tomorrow. So it should be a nice day. Uh, though again, though it will be a little warmer. Again, if we look at the temperatures on Ventu Sky, uh, you'll see here that tomorrow will definitely be warmer than today. More of that west wind. Uh, we're going to probably be on uh, Jersey. You're going to the 50s, probably low to mid 50s. If you're in Jersey, you'll probably need a light jacket. That's it. Probably Long Island, too. Uh, just a couple degrees cooler. I'm not going to be a big difference 
with that uh, westerly flow there that you have. Uh, but it, in, on Tuesday, you can see it's more of a northerly component to the wind. So that's why I think it'll be a tendency to keep Long Island a little cooler. But other than that, I think that's going to wrap up this weather update. Uh, what a crazy uh, day or two it's been. Uh, look forward to some peace uh, with the weather because it's been absolutely nuts. Thank you for watching and take care.